Hello everyone, welcome back to Tall Tales Custom Tackles. Um, we're going to do a video today on just a, pretty much a, like a perch style pattern that I like to do. Um, it's not your traditional style. Uh, anyway, I'm going to show you pretty much the colors we're going to start with. I'm going to show you the bait. Uh, then I'm going to pause the video for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and lay down the opaque white base coat and pretty much then I'll come back because I'm, if I just straight play it, it's just going to be too long. So I'm going to, you know, pause it several times throughout the video while I'm cleaning the airbrush, while I'm doing other stuff, you know, and I'll, I'll tell you what I do, you know, on my downtime. Um, but anyway, get into it. The colors we're going to use is pretty much just going to be opaque white, uh, Caribbean blue, pearl satin gold, wicked golden yellow, uh, pearl tangerine, leaf green. Uh, my It's my mixture. It's just a, a color I use mainly for bass, but it's kind of like a, uh, a dark green. If you don't if you don't have any of these colors just anything close if you want to try to redo this um opaque black that's going to be the colors we're uh going to be working with today and like i say if you don't have uh this shade of blue you could use any of them. I, mean, I got other shades of blue that i could technically use without using this same with the gold uh you don't have to use pearl satin gold uh i got other shades of gold i could use but I just chose to go with this one. Same with the uh, golden yellow. Uh, it's That's the beauty of doing it yourself. Any color you choose to go with. I mean, um, tangerine, that's just the color I choose to go with today. Usually it'd be a different shade of uh, like an orange, you know, but I chose to go with this one today. Uh, same with this leaf green. This leaf green is a, a great color, but if you don't have this color, you can always go with a different shade of green or if there's a shade of green that you are trying to make you know if you need it a little darker you can always add just a little touch of a different color if you need it lighter just a couple of drops of yellow in it i mean um just play around with colors i mean it's not set especially if you're doing it for yourself i mean just if you don't have a certain color you're looking for experiment with it um you can get those little cups so you don't waste none in your bottle just get a uh i got tons of them around here you just put a, a little bit in it mix it up and if you don't get the shade you're looking for you ain't you ain't wasted a whole bottle you only wasted just a little bit so you toss it out and start over or just spray what you got um anyway it's all about experimenting um we're gonna use this stuff right here it's just like a mesh um it's like a i forget what they call it you buy it let's see i got a brand new one up here they might have it uh yeah it, it's actually called a uh, mesh you get it from um you get it from hobby lobby it's like 4.99 uh same with the netting you know if you're trying to do like a traditional scale pattern with netting uh, all that stuff you can find every bit of it in Hobby Lobby and it's fairly cheap and it lasts a long time um, I usually re you can see right here I mean I got a bunch of it that I've already used and sometimes I'll pull out that stuff but most of the time I'll I'll just start out with you know new stuff because it's not uh it's not that expensive uh, we're gonna use a couple of this right here is just a easy cut out, you know, nothing fancy. It's just cut out uh, just to get a little, little gill plate. You know, we're going to, uh, we'll use this pretty much one time on the other side, uh, on each side, just to, this is the bait we're going with. Um, I haven't painted these yet. Um, with the pattern we're painting, that, uh, that hologram does not matter. I mean... We're pretty much covering all of that up so um i've done this style uh bait you know jerk baits a lot but i usually use the 
the ones that don't have no uh, hologram in them, but I'm running low on I'm running low on these, so I decided to use this one. Um, anyway, we're gonna pause this video for a couple minutes. It ain't gonna take me long. I'm gonna I'm gonna spray a base coat with a um, the opaque white clean out the airbrush and then we'll come back when we get ready to lay down the next color all right all right you can see what we got we went over the whole bait with white um the next color get you focused the next color we're gonna do is the caribbean blue um uh, all right got it loaded and you're pretty much just gonna cover the whole bait. Got it. Got it going lightly. I'm expecting the compressor to kick on in there. I knew it was coming. I could tell. But we're just gonna put a light coat over the entire bait. Now I got the pressure turned down a little bit, so we don't over saturate it all right and from here i'm gonna dry this clean the airbrush out and we will come back to the next step all right we got it dry and you want to make sure you uh you try to dry it really well because it's the next step if you don't have it real dry uh and you try to rush it you can mess up okay we got a little piece of you know this mesh cut off um and really if you don't have this style whatever you got will work um personally this right here stuff works great uh depends on how thick i want the pattern to look uh i might just run it regular or sometimes i might just fold the entire thing over you know just like that to really try to you know define that let me look at it i might decide to because you can always look at it and just see like right there you can see it would it would probably hide of a lot of that uh a lot of that pattern we're gonna try to go with so i'm thinking we're just gonna do a single wrap let me look yeah that's pretty much what we want to go with so what i'll do here so we don't waste because you can reuse like this right here is plenty to do a whole nother one so i'll just cut that pretty much in half and i'm trying to keep i'm trying to keep it in the uh you know in the screen it's i got the camera right in front of me and i'm trying to watch it plus see what i'm doing so just just bear with me if it's not perfect all right you just want to get a, a bunch of these little clips if you don't have those and all you got is like little alligator clips i mean they work fine too uh I, I most of the time i'll use both you know it just really depends on what all i'm doing all right let's see if i can do it on camera from here i'm just going and you pretty much gonna have to work it back and forth once you get it started you know but also be careful when you're clamping down because you can, if you push against the bait, you can uh, chip the, the paint you already have, you know. So you, you want to try to be careful with that. And pretty much you're just working your way down. Once you work down and got it where it's pretty tight around the back, you can always adjust more if you need to. You know, you can pull kind of a upward angle. go all right go back to this uh because you see you got a little slack on the back so as you're pulling up tight like this then you clamp down oh see if i can keep you in the camera you're clamping down and i mean it ain't got to be super tight because it's most of this is going to be kind of done like a like an overspray um but that is pretty much how you want it. Uh, as far as this up here, uh, sometimes it's hard to get it real tight around the lip. You just 
do the best you can. Try to get one. Let's see. Here's where we'll come in with a couple of alligator clamps just to just to try to tighten it up a little bit. And you can always twist pretty much anything you can do to try and make it work for you. Um, right there, let's see. It's a little loose around the eyes, but that's fine because we're going to do a lot of, you know, right here around the, the eye area, we'll do a, let me see if I can get that wrapped, but we're going to try to make it look a little uh blended you know around the eyes i mean because i like to put a little bit of black around the eyes anyway right there i'm gonna use this to hold that tight and if i'm making you dizzy i apologize i do a, i'm trying to i'm really trying to keep it on there we go now i'm satisfied with that that's tighten it up i'm trying to keep it as uh as clean as I can. Let me find one more of those clamps. I got I got a little drawer of these alligator clamps, but I'm trying to find this one will work. Cause a lot of them I've done put wire on, you know, just to try to try to help um help keep things tight. Okay. Now that's got it tight. That's how I want it to look. And I can tell you ahead of time, this video is going to be longer than our than our last crankbait video. I mean, I've kept that one fairly decent. Okay, this point right here, we are just about ready. Um, I mean, and from here, what we're going to do is actually cover this bait up with white again. Um, I know it don't make sense now, but once we get done with it and you see what's going on, you'll, you'll be like, okay, all right. So... Let me set that to the side. Shake up the the white, and we're just gonna cover the entire bait again with white. All right, and then we'll the compressor be off in a second. <laughs> um, well, while that's going, we're gonna go ahead and just spray, and I'll. You know, I'll give you some information on compressor too in a minute because I I see a lot of people asking, especially online, like on online forums and on Facebook about compressors and and stuff like that. And uh, you know, I'll I'll go over a little bit of information or advice, I should say. Um, I bought this compressor and stuff back when I got started airbrushing uh crankbaits and that was in uh 2013 actually so it's been a it's been a good one um um i've been real happy with it uh, well i wasn't in the camera the whole time sorry about that i'm oh i got the camera pointed a little bit downward from where i was working there we go but uh anyway you get the idea but uh anyway why that's drying i'll touch base on something this right here is a a four cylinder uh it's a small little combat uh compacting uh compressor from uh i think tc global makes it it's uh it's on that uh that airbrush master or whatever it's called tc global website um it's a it's been a good one like i say i bought it back in um 2013 the first one i bought was their two cylinder and it lasted about 10 minutes and it just one of the cylinders actually busted on it. and i'm like wow if that's so we traded it out uh i bought this one which was a few dollars more of an upgrade and they guaranteed it so i bought this one and it's been a great one so far the airbrush that came with it honestly um it came with one of them cheap masters airbrush i did not like it it did not uh work very good so that's when i went with the the um uh, the iwata revolution or something like that i think it was uh it's been a great airbrush i've been using these uh this neo for a while and it works good all right on the air compressor um 
with that being said, it's a good one, but you don't get much uh, tank time. You know, it they don't hold a lot of air, so it will cut on a lot. Um, I haven't done it yet because um, there ain't been no need, but I do plan on switching over and to make more room up here is to hook this all into my air compressor in the next room. Um, I got that pancake one in there. Uh, Cause I mean, only thing I run that pancake one on is my air vise, you know, my clamp. So it ain't nothing to put another T and another uh, air regulator. And I can actually put all that right here. So I just haven't done it yet. I will get around to it. Um, that way, especially if I'm gonna start making a few videos right here, air compressor kick on in the next room and it won't be so loud in here. Plus I'll have a lot more, you know, time between you know between repumps um anyway we got this sprayed i'm gonna go ahead and get uh get it dry get set up for the next color and meet you right back here all right we're ready for the next step um one other thing i will touch on real quick um when you're wrapping and some people do it some people don't when you're wrapping the uh bills up on your baits uh, a lot of people, and I use it a lot of times, you know, just regular painter's tape, but at the same time, you can get, like this one I got wrapped up, and I could have showed you. Uh, this is actually just a, and it works really well. It This is technically for people that graft flowers, you know, where they cut and try to uh, splice flowers. Um, you can get it pretty much, I think Walmart even carries it, but you can get it online really cheap, like on Amazon or something like that. Uh, it's just like a, it's like a, uh, I think they call it like a, a grafting, uh, wrap. Anyway, it's for, uh, for flowers and it wraps around it. You don't have to put no tape on it. Uh, it wraps around and really holds tight. You know, it, it, it kind of reminds you of like a ceram wrap and that's probably all it is, you know, but anyway, that works really well. Um. So I just wanted to touch on that real quick. I got the uh, the gold ready. Uh, the next step was gold. And all you want to do here is just put it across the belly about a quarter of the way up. You know, so not very high up. And don't worry about that very bottom. Because you will have a little bit of gap where these, uh, where these pins are. Don't worry about that. That is no big deal. And if you overspray higher than a quarter way up. It is not that big of a deal. I mean, it can be covered up. And if you hold your bait, when you hold your bait, if you hold it straight out, you're going to get more spray up. If you hold it in an angle, you'll get, you'll get a, what'll happen is you'll get a thicker, a coat, a thicker coat on the bottom like this and then you'll get that overspray on the side which is just about perfect and all i use is a just a regular blow dryer i mean you ain't got to get fancy with it uh if you don't have a blow dryer for heat setting you can just let it sit to the side it might take several minutes but you can let it sit to the side before you start the next step so all right we got that step ready we're gonna clean out this gold and come back with the next color all right next is our wicked yellow and from here you pretty much just want to you want to hold your bait not like we did before you want to hold it kind of sideways and just run right down the edge of where your gold is uh, basically you just want to run about halfway up the bait but you you don't want it where it covers up all your gold you still want that gold to show out and you can test you know i'll do it you can see where you can test how much spray you want uh you know i'll spray this rag i'll spray whatever i want to spray you know spray up there where spray up there and see where it covers but you just right down the side like that and you see on the bottom, we still, if that camera I, I show, you still got that real defined gold, then it goes to the yellow. And you don't, you ain't got to saturate it. 
Um, same with this side. You just go right down that middle pretty much. And I got the pressure turned down where I can really saturate the yellow, but then you can see the gold. And that's all it takes. Not much. I hope it's showing up real well, but anyway, you'll be able to see it with the there. You can see it better on this side. You got that gold on the bottom. That's pretty much all you want is that gold. And each time you spray it, it's is it cover up a little bit more of the top. You know, it's just building layers. Um we're gonna dry this off, clean the airbrush, and we'll be right back with the next color. Alright, we got this dry enough. And right now, like I say, just looking at it, you know, it's harder to tell on camera versus right here looking at it. You got the gold, the yellow. Next, we're going to do the orange color, um, the or tangerine. And from there, we're pretty much just going to go right towards the top. And it's going to cover a lot of this yellow up, but you still, you'll have, you know, it'll show through. You're not covering up completely, so you're just covering up the top portion of it and like i say it, it might sound dumb right now you know watching these steps but when it's done you'll see what kind of effect it causes all right got the airbrush turned down a little bit low and same thing you want to you just want to go right at the top of it and you ain't got to go real thick with it just like that you gotta excuse me because i'm trying to there's what we want i'm trying to watch the uh camera plus you know make sure i'm not messing up <laughs> So you can see that all this is just right there at the top just a, a little light line it's fading over and you'll see the next step the next couple steps you'll really tell what's going on we're going to get this dry get the airbrush clean and we'll be back with the next step all right with well, this step you'll see a lot more what's going on because we're going to spray in a little bit different angle and it's going to cover a lot of this up down here but it's not going to cover all of it you know it's just going to make a it'll make it blend in this is the leaf green and from here i'm just holding in a, a angle where you'll get a lot of overspray and you know if you cover it down the back i'll say you'll get a lot of overspray and you don't want it where it's saturated but you want you know, you want it to overspray a lot of this. And right now, it don't look like much, but the next step, you'll see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. All right, that looks that looks pretty good. Because we got a lot of overspray. You can still see the gold, the yellow, the orange, and now you can see this green. And you will, the next step, we're going to go with a darker green, so it's, and we're mainly going to concentrate more on the back. But, all right, we'll be right back. All right, with this uh, step, like I said, if you don't have, you know, a darker green color, just mix some stuff up until you get the color effect. And with something like this, you don't have to follow my exact steps. I mean, how I was doing the bottom going up you can layer it like if you hold your bait like this and spray one color in an angle like that the next color you spray it with your bait angle like that and then the last color you spray it like this when you take this wrap off you'll have different layer effects you know you won't it won't all be just the same you'll have it might not be real you know it might be real defined because it's just in slightly different angles that it's spraying but you can do it any way you want um uh, that's the beauty of doing it yourself and i don't mind try this uh try it in different colors i've done this and instead of colors like this 
I'll do it. Sometimes I'll just get wild with it. And I'll do it in a yellow, blue, pink, purple, you know, just multiple colors. And sometimes it'll, it'll surprise you. All right, and this one right here is a little bit darker green. We're just going to go right down the back over that. And let it, you don't want to cover it, but you want to try to get a little bit of overspray. Just a little. That's all we're going for is just a little bit of overspray. And this one right here, I'm holding it in a little bit of an angle where it's not getting saturated on the back sides of the netting. But that's pretty much what we want there. I'll put a little more on the back. And when you're holding it like this and shooting straight, try to get in the camera focus. Shooting it straight like this, it, it saturates the back, but then it just, you know, it just basically kind of like a uh kind of like a just a mist over the sides and covering the sides a little bit but it's got a good blend to it we're gonna dry this uh clean the airbrush and we will be right back all right now here we're gonna take this wrap off and see what we got um, sometimes I will, before I take the wrap off, I will go ahead and go over it with a little bit darker, uh, around the head. Um, I'm not going to do it this time. I just, I want to see how it's going to look without going darker around the head right now. Um, I can always do an overspray and honestly, I will probably end up doing a little overspray towards the back. Um, after this, you know, before we're done anyway, just to, just to tie things in, um, uh, it really all depends on how it looks when I'm done. Anytime I do these, sometimes I'll I'll improvise and make stuff up as I go. All right, let's go ahead and remove this stuff. Um, when you're removing these wraps, even though you've uh, let it dry, you still want to try to be um, careful because sometimes it will uh, the net will actually dry so good into the paint that when you're lifting it off it can peel a little section up so you got to be real careful and if it does happen i'll show you what i do to fix it um basically i'm hoping it don't happen but it does happen sometime so let's see if we can get this off real carefully you just slowly want to peel it peel it back and once you get it started, it should come on out fairly, fairly easy. And if it's just small little pieces that come up, I'm not worried about it. But if it's a bigger chunk, then we will have to fix it. And a lot of times what that requires is just mixing up a little touch of a paint and, and just trying to fill it in the best you can with, uh, with a, a little fine paint brush or you can always do like an over spray which i don't know if i'm gonna do an over spray on this one it's pretty good okay see if you can see what we're working with. you see how that blue comes out that's try to angle you a little better you can see how that blue comes out now we still got a few more steps to do uh that belly you can tie it in or leave it like that honestly on this one it gi it gives it a little character so i might just leave it um most of the jerk baits i do don't have the fin pattern this one if i really want to get fancy with it you know we could paint that in um i'm gonna skip that step i think it'll be just fine we still gonna do the uh the gill plate though um let me see if i can get everything positioned move that out the way because yeah, they all, most of the time when i'm doing uh i'm doing these baits i hold it you know i'm i'm holding it and spraying it um stuff where you need to hold a a stencil to it or do something like a uh, spray like a gill plate or anything like that i will go ahead and and put it on the little the little helping hands as as they call it uh, there we go try to get it 
get it angled and from here it don't it don't take much i'm gonna try to get you where you can see what's going on and all we're gonna do right here is basically just real lightly put a little little touch of uh a black right here around where a, a gill plate ear would be uh, that is pretty much it i mean it don't it don't require a whole lot you know so we're gonna do that and then we're right around the head you know i'm gonna add a little touch of black just to blend it in a little bit you know you don't want to saturate it but all right load some load some black up. i didn't want to go ahead and load it because i didn't want it to stop it up because a lot of these colors i haven't really thinned down so sometimes you have to shoot them a little a little higher pressure than what i typically like but let's try to turn it down a little bit because it's best if you can thin them down but sometimes i i don't really thin them like i need to and if you can tell this one's been shot quite a few times all right all right and that right there on this side is all i want to go with for now just a little just a little spot like that um from there i'm just gonna wipe this off so it don't transfer to the other side and sometimes it's hard to try to get it to uh line up perfect you know with how you've done the other side uh sometimes you can sometimes you know you might have it a little bit off uh, most of the time if i'm a little bit off it's not by much so i honestly don't i don't freak out over it all right i think that's i think that's pretty close let's see yeah i think that's pretty close i mean it's it looks good to me um well, while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and take this off because there's one other step I need to do. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit of, a little bit of black around the, around the nose and eyes. Of course, the air compressor will start. Come on. There you go. But put a little bit around the back of the head and around the eyes and the face just to tie it in a little bit you know even around the and what i'm trying to do is just make it look more more natural and the air is turned real low where we won't over splatter all right i think that's about what i want right there you see it's just around the the face and all all right we're gonna uh clean the black out because the next step requires just a real small and i ain't got to do it with the airbrush but i'm gonna go ahead and just do it anyway but um the next step just requires a little bit of white on the airbrush and because i mean i'm not gonna do no overspray down the back usually i would just spray a little bit um i honestly think it's honestly think it's fine i mean of course i all right see the more i talk about it, the more i just i'll decide to do it and all you're doing all pretty much all i'm doing it's not enough to really change anything it's just a it was just a light little spray because you still see the pattern it just darkens up that that green down the back a little bit more that is it i mean it just darkened it up just a little bit right down the back behind the head all right, now we're on to the next step. I'm going to clean the airbrush, and we'll come right back. All right, this next step you don't have to do. Uh, most of the time, I will just I will get a little drop of white, put it down, take like a tip of a uh, of toothpick or something like that to do it, but I'm going to do it on the airbrush, just go around just for... Uh, just to show you, and hopefully we won't mess it up. Uh, sometimes you can get a little overspray. So we're going to try to do this as best we can without messing anything up. 
and I'm trying let me see if I can get this camera to lock in better if you see this stencil instead of putting it dead over where I did I want it back just a I'm talking about just a touch and basically a little bit more and you'll see what I'm talking about all I want it and that is exactly what I want all I want it to do is just highlight right behind where uh, I put that I mean it really it don't look like much but that stands out when you're when you done you got the clear coat uh it really it really stands out and makes it look so well right there in that angle you can see um uh, it just makes that stand out because we didn't go real thick with that black but because i put that little touch of white around it and it's not thick white i mean it is just real thin layer uh it shows up really good all right let's see if we can do this side without messing up and all we're doing is just coming right behind it just a little bit um and i bring it to the side and that is about it i want a little bit that is it like i say you can take this off you can see it there and there uh it's just a little it's just a little touch and honestly that makes a world of difference um sometimes i have done it sometimes i might even take a little get like a little small drop of uh red you know i'm not gonna do it on this because i think it looks perfect like that but i'll get a small drop of red put it on a toothpick and just barely touch it you know like right there and a lot of times that really really makes a difference um uh, let me just, it don't take but just a second to dry that. But, uh, Alright. Anyway, that is, uh, that is pretty much about it. You can always add other stuff. If you wanted to darken it up, you could have just went thicker with your colors. If, um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do, but if you really look, try to get where you can see. You see, still see the blue, and that was why we went over it with a blue. But you got the gold, the yellow, the orange. You see where it starts out green, darker, darker, and then it goes to that dark green, then the overspray with the black. It really ties it together. Uh, we could have went fancy with it and, you know, took a brush or, or even just try to just small, lightly do it with the, uh, with the airbrush but and make those make those little fins pop a little more but for video purposes this go around we didn't uh like i say that blue if if that blue on the bottom bothers you you can just take like a uh a little light mist of the white or even like a pearl silver or you can keep it with that gold and just that pearl gold and go over it a little bit and that will tie it in a little better uh i'm not gonna bother with it it gives it character uh and honestly, when I do the clear coat, that blue is going to pop even more uh, because of what I'm going to do. So um, anyway, we're going to clean out this airbrush real quick. As a matter of fact, this video is already going to be long. Um, so just in case you want to see how I do it, I'll go ahead and show you. Uh, simple. I got, a, I got an old rag laying here and you see I got Q-tips everywhere. Q-tips are your friend when you're... Uh, when you're trying to clean out an airbrush, I'll turn the pressure back up. And all this is, is just airbrush cleaner. You can get it at Hobby Lobby's online. Uh, it's the spray nozzle. I used to mix my own stuff up. And I'm about out of what I've got mixed up. So I, I don't plan on mixing any more up. I'll just buy it like this. This is, I mean, it's $10 a bottle. But uh, honestly, it lasts a... A long time you use a lot of it uh, I'm going to turn that off because we're not going to once I get this clean we're not going to need it um I'll take the q-tip and I'll spin it inside 
top just work things around i'll do towards the end of where the needle is cycle it and like i say you'll waste a lot of this stuff don't don't be afraid to waste some of it i mean that's part of it because you let this thing gum up and it gets where it's bad gummed up it's a a pain in the butt put your finger over the tip and and cycle it like that and it'll blow back any old stuff i keep a rag and you're not seeing it on camera but i got a rag in my lap right here i say an old rag it's actually an old shirt but anyway i keep that right there in my lap and it is pretty much cleaned out i mean the needle tip is pretty clean from here what i do and i've said it before a lot of people might not like it and they might cringe on it i've been doing it for years and it ain't matter of fact i've been doing this since 2013 and i ain't had it mess anything up yet i pour a little bit of this polish remover in it and you don't want much and when this stuff sprays out it makes a fume that is terrible to smell um but anyway i'll i'll take and just cycle that a few times just like that i'll take one more q-tip really move it around because the more you do it the more you're going to break up stuff i'll go through the tip again see they nothing came off of it and from here i'll remove the back loosen this up and cycle the needle back and forth a little bit just in case there's anything around the tip of that needle spray that go ahead and just dump whatever's left she's pretty clean and this is honestly the step i do that's why i didn't show between uh between you know paint sessions this is pretty much almost the exact step i do each time so once I got it clean, other than the nail polish, I only do that, uh, the polish remover, I only do that at the end when I'm done. All right, that is pretty much it. So I am, I am done. I won't do any more to it. The only other thing I do different, and let me grab it real quick. The only thing I do different, and I said it in a previous video, is when I get it, right now it's clean, I'll put a three-in-one oil in it. Not much, just a just a little bit because this right here actually has a horrible a horrible smell when you're when you're spraying this because cause it's only oil so i'll spray about that much and i'll do the same thing i'll take that needle and cycle it back and forth try to get where you can see cycle it back and forth and that is lubing up everything throughout here nothing gets gummed up nothing sticks tighten that back down and now honestly it is I'll dump out a little bit of rest, wipe up with my shirt the overspray, and pretty much from there, I'm just gonna let the air spray out. I mean, it's like, you'll get, uh, well, there's still a lot of air. I mean, to speed things up, we're just gonna, I ain't showing you, I know that's horrible. But I'm basically just blowing everything out. And that is honestly the exact step I do because I don't like no, uh, when I'm in my downtime, I don't like no air to be left in the line. Once that's all the way done, I'll put that back on. Put it back together. And I do the same process with my other one. There's no air. Um... And from this point, I will actually, well, my little piece of paper is gone, but anyway, um, I'll take and put a, there it is. And you can tell I've been using this same little wad of paper for a long time. I just, I just stick that there. And all that does is just keeps dust or anything from getting down inside of it. And this, this airbrush might sit like this for a couple of months and i can pull this out put my paint in and it's ready to go so i mean plus i mean my building like i say is uh my my shop building is is climate control that's heat ac uh, i don't have no dust blowing in uh when i'm do woodworking in the other side i shut this door it gets vented out so 
Uh, there's no reason for that airbrush to get stopped up. All right. Um, I'm actually going to pause the video for a few minutes. I'm going to pick out a set of eyes that I want for this. And we'll come back when I'm clear coating. Uh, I'm going to do a different clear coat this go around. Um, instead of doing the actual UV light dipping. Because I want to add something to it. Uh, I want it to really stand out a little bit more. So I want it to be a little bit more flashy. So um, I'm going to show you what I do. Anyway, we'll be right back in a few minutes. All right, I'm going to see if I can do this next step on camera. But uh, there's the eyes I decided to go with. You know, I could have went with a solid black or silver, but, you know, it's my bait. It's for me. So, those are the eyes I decided to go with. All right. This next step, I'm going to use this uh, DevCon. This is actually the 30 minute. Uh, this stuff makes a really good hard coat. Um, I like to get it even. You, If you don't have a little small scale uh just try to get it as close as you can it's but just for me i like to get it even um go with the 30 minute the five minute honestly is you don't have hardly no time to work this one right here it's a little more forgiving you got a few minutes to work even it starts setting up really fast um all you want really you can do it any way you want i buy these cheap paint brushes uh let me move this over to the side and I'll show you. I just, I buy them. They cheap. I got more of them, honestly, in packages. You get, you know, for like a dollar, you get a, a big pack of them. So they're very cheap. Um, anyway, we're going to get started on this. And what I'm going to do is pour out. I'll turn this on. all right and start and this stuff unless it's warm it, it pours out a little bit slow so and that's fine let's see and you don't it don't take a whole lot but we're going to go with like let's see here i'd rather go a little over than under uh we'll go even to or close to it come on 1.9 there we go i knew that should have been it all right we got an even two and you can go until you get four me i personally turn it off turn it back on let it reset and i'll go even two again um you ain't got to be that picky with it i'm just this is how i've always done it and this is how i'm going to continue to do it so that's my way um uh, the beauty of doing this you can figure out what works for you and once you figure out what works for you stick with it now even there we go even with me even though i got stuff that works for me i'll still sometimes i'll uh i'll see something new and i'll i'll try it out and even if i don't stick to how you know i see the person doing it i might improvise with it and mix up what they're doing and what i'm doing and you know what i mean like come up with something new all right from here you just want to mix it up um mix it up really good and like i say it's not real cold but it's it's a little chilly this morning so this stuff is a little bit thicker than it needs to be while you're mixing it if you're if you feel like it's you know too thick you need to thin it up you can always just hit it real quick with the blow dryer or or a heat gun or something like that. You don't want to hit it real hard, you know. Um, you basically don't want to melt it down to where it's just runny like water. But you can you can make it where it's it's a little thinner. Uh, it don't hurt anything to be a little thicker, you know. I'll just I'll mix it up real good. And you want to make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom. You know, you just just use you know use common sense. You wanna you wanna have it mixed really well. The last thing you want to do is take a bait you've 
spent you know time on and trying to get right and and not be able to you know get a good clear coat on it all right here's the difference on what i'm going to do i want a real small touch i want this one to have a little bit of sparkle and it don't take much of this stuff right here i'm thinking that's enough let me see this is just like a it's a alumilite uh pearl powder you know and all that is it's just it gives a little pearl effect and that was more than plenty uh it don't take much this stuff goes a long ways um uh, i've been using this stuff for about the last seven or eight years and one other thing I want to do, and I don't do it often, is I want to put a little touch of blue, like micro flake. And when I say, I'm talking about a, not even a full pinch, just a, just a little bit. Uh, and this is something I do once in a while, not too often, but I basically want to highlight the the under blue a little bit you know where that base blue we started out with once we got it wrapped and you see it's not over uh you know it ain't taking over i got some on my thumb but anyway it's not taking over it's uh it's just a little bit and that would mix with that pearl when it when it dries and you get that final clear coat it'll just be real sparkly i mean nice and like i gotta say it's not gonna it's not gonna take over the whole bait you're not gonna end up with something that you know girly or whatever you want to call it all right and from here you are just brushing it on like i say it's you might end up uh i don't trust it i'll hold it for a second uh where's my i got a pair of little small vice grips hold on one sec I don't want to take a chance. Instead of digging around trying to find the ones I got over here, I'll just grab a new pair. And I'll actually just clip that on the back. Because the last thing you want to do is take a, a chance. I mean, these right here work great, but they don't hold enough pressure if you're... And I'd rather just do this and not take a chance on dropping the bait knocking it off all right and you basically you just want to cover the entire bait now if it was warm in here i didn't leave my heater on last night and here in florida we've actually had a few days of of heat come through while it was raining the rain stopped and now it's got uh it's gotten cool again so it's it's pretty chilly out there uh it's not real cold in here it was only when i came in here this morning it was like i don't know probably mid 60s you know it's not real cold but yeah, hang on this camera a little better there we go it's not real cold but it's cool enough that when uh when you're doing something like this it makes this stuff a little bit thick but it's fine if i really wanted to right now i could hit it with the uh with the heat gun or even hit it with you know the blow dryer just for a quick second and it would it would soften it up but it's fine now if it started hardening up a little quick on me and started setting up you can you can actually hit it with the heat and get you a couple extra seconds of uh work time with it you know and smooth things out there's been times where I've tried to do multiple baits, you know, and you almost run out of time. You can hit it real quick with the heat gun, soften it up just enough to finish up what you got to do, you know. So just keep that in mind. Now, with the five-minute epoxy, you, you got time just for one bait. Uh, I mean, if you try to do two, unless it's smaller baits or unless you can gunk it on real quick, you are going to run out of time. I mean, five minute pot, so they should call it like 35 seconds because it's, it really, it, uh, it sets up really quick. Now this, I'm not going to show you on video, uh, like, well, I will show you, but we'll just have to come back. I mean, 
um this right here i like to let this sit for a while uh, it'll probably be ready i gotta go somewhere here in the next hour or so so honestly this video will probably be uploaded either late tonight or tomorrow i'll when i get back late this afternoon i'll come out and check on it, it should be ready um this stuff dries pretty pretty fast i mean it's it's usually i usually like to let it sit for 24 hours but i can come out here this afternoon and and touch it uh and i might i might not i might uh continue this video in the morning regardless you'll you'll see the uh the finished product and we'll we'll put hooks on it and i'll put some uh i don't know i ain't decided if i'm gonna put some some uh silver hooks on it or just some of my regular black nickel style hooks um because i got different ones i go with it just i mean it all depends i got some triple sevens by eagle claw i like they're they're a little bit stouter hook they're more of a saltwater rated hook but a jerk bait like this most likely i'll go with my a little bit lighter wire sharp you know hooks by either owner or um one of my other companies i mean i'll figure it out when the time comes all right i think we pretty much got it about and see what i mean the work time with this stuff is pretty good and you always want to try to really pay attention around them eyes because the last thing you want is a is an air bubble to come out around the eye socket i mean with a bait like this it don't mess it up it just it's one of them things you you want to try to get it as clean and nice as you can all right that looks good we're done there i mean i'll unplug that now my battery was about to die so i had it plugged up bring it over here under the light and you can really see that that pearl effect coming um and from there if you want to you ain't got to if you want to hit it real quick and it, you don't need much heat and that'll help it run even like i say it's a little chilly that will actually help it run even so oh come on camera Try to angle this camera. All right, you can see what's going on. Take it off of that. From here, I'm just gonna put it there. Come here, switch. Hit my switch on this little turner. Like I say, the uh, if you watch my past video, I think I or one of my past videos. I showed this. This is a simple little turner that I made years ago. And like I say, I mean, if it ain't broke, why fix it? I haven't upgraded. Uh, this is one of the first, you know, try to show. It's just got a little motor on the back side. It's running through. Uh, simple, simple design. Um, if I got a, at one time I was doing a lot of baits, you know, I can. I hook them in with rubber bands or a spring and just hold them tight there. Most of the time, I've only, you know, I'm only doing a few at a time, so I just put them on here. And what that does is will keep it from running. If you just hung them up, you'll you'll have a buildup on the end, so that just keeps it, you know, even. And it'll turn out here. I'll leave it out here, and I'll come back and check it later this afternoon. Um one other thing i will touch on i've had a couple people comment and i see it online all the time uh about where to get blanks from um i keep i've got some up there but i keep um uh, i keep just a few blanks i don't you know i do a lot of for myself i do a lot of wood baits so uh, i just keep a couple of containers uh little trays with blanks uh as far as where you get them from I've got a lot of them from, like these, I just, I got these in a while back, 
Um, I actually ordered these off of Amazon, I believe. Uh, I just wanted to try them out. I haven't used any of them yet. The one I did today was the first one I, I done of this one. Uh, these little frogs. I don't know why I bought so damn many of them. Uh, these little frogs I bought from a, a guy selling them off of, uh, off of eBay, actually, just to try out. They do all right. Um, it's designed where you paint it up, add your own little skirt with a little hook on the back. You know, you can, it works all right. Uh, so a lot of these old ones I've got here, you know, even these, a lot of these older ones I've got, um, was that is, let's see here, is from a company that went out a bit, uh, like the Coda Lakes Tack or something like that is what I think it was. Um, they're the company I started out ordering blanks from, but then I know they went out of business. I guess they sold all their stuff out um, years ago. Last I heard from them, they had pretty much sold everything out. So, But a lot of these blanks came from him, you know, before they all went out of business. I bought up a bunch of, uh, bunch of blanks. I, I need to find out where to get some of these blanks. I like these. Uh, this one right here makes a great, it's a medium diver, you know, but, uh, it makes a great frog pattern and a awesome baby bass pattern. It's got where the big eyes bug out. I've only got two of those blanks left. Uh, I've actually not been offering, you know, for a while I haven't been offering these blanks as far as painting for customers because I've only got a couple left. So I've been using them for myself. Uh, these, I forgot, there was a guy on Marketplace way a while back that had some of these, and I bought up, I believe I bought 20 of them to try out. Um, these S-Cranks, there's a lot of companies that carry the S-Cranks because they're popular. Um, I honestly don't remember who it was. I saw somebody online uh, that had those. Same with the 1.5s. You know, I just keep common stuff, 1.5s, 2.5s, um, S-cranks, stuff like that. Uh, I do a, you know, I do a lot of. Anyway, um, if you looking for blanks, really just shop around and get, uh, get people's opinions. I mean, look at reviews. Uh, I've tried cheaper ones like from China and stuff like that and most of the time they they work just fine They might be a They might be a slight difference in weight. Uh, it just really depends on what you're doing if you're doing it for yourself Buy your blanks from China. I mean it might take you two months to get it, but whatever it's cheap uh, Just really depends on what you're doing if you're trying to make a real high quality bait and put you know awesome paint jobs on it and sell them for a good price i mean um i would suggest go ahead and buying a good quality blank um from a a decent company you know um uh, ain't nothing wrong like i say with cheap ones but if you're gonna really get into it hard full time and try to try to make a a good little bit of money off of them i would say quality because Personally, I wouldn't want to pay somebody fifteen, twenty dollars for a crankbait that you paid, you know, nine cent for the blank from China. You know, anyway. Um, I hope this gave you some information. I know I already know it's gonna be long because uh, we're still not fully done, and we will come back when uh, this is done. Like I say, it'll probably be this afternoon. I'll finish it up, or it might even be in the morning. Then we'll. Sh you know i'll show you what the finishing touch is and uh matter of fact when i show it to you i'll already have hooks on it you know i won't show you the the siding process i'll just go ahead and put hooks on it show you what it looks like and we'll close the video out all right we're back it's been several hours later i mean you can see the uh when you turn it oh went too close you can see the the blue sparkle in it you know it just you can see the pattern I mean it really stands out but that uh that little light flake 
you know that's like a real small micro let me see if this light over here show better just a real small micro size flake that just gives it a little bit of little bit of pop all right i ended up putting uh some number six vmc uh ball bearing hooks on it. uh they're extremely sharp so i mean they'll they'll hold a they'll definitely hold a fish um uh, these hooks if you ain't never dealt with them they're very sharp so you have to be careful with them i mean they will they will peg you um anyway so that's pretty much gonna wrap this video up um hope it's hope it's something you learn um uh, you can take that little technique and you know put your own twist to it i mean you ain't got to copy it exact uh you ain't got to go with the same you know mesh i used i mean you can use pretty much anything if you can't find a mesh like that get you a uh and i'll show you what i'm talking about get you because i got i've got a bunch of different ones in here but this right here i mean i've used this stuff and you can stretch it in different ways this is actually and i'll pull one out to show you this is actually a, a um a scrubber you know like a shower scrubber you know and i'll sometimes i'll and i've got this right here cut up you know and i'll actually pull a chunk of that out cut it wrap it around and use that i mean you can you can improvise um you can take a a onion bag and wrap it a couple times and get a similar effect anyway what i'm getting at you don't have to just go spend you know a bunch of money on stuff you can you can do it with stuff uh just improvise um anyway like i say you can try that out try it with different colors i do it sometimes with different colors you know it makes a uh, great looking bait uh especially if you want to do some bright stuff underneath it really does anyway with that being said we're going to go ahead and close this video out uh, i know it's long but you know it is what it is um sometimes learning a video trying to teach something takes a little while um anyway thank you for you know watching those of you that are subscribed to the channel thank you uh, i appreciate it um if you like the video thumbs up uh leave me comments if uh, if you leave me a comment and i don't respond because sometimes i don't see them and i know i say it on a lot of videos you can always contact me on my personal uh facebook page um under eric gilly you can just send me a message there or you can go to the uh, tall tales custom tackles you know you can hit me up there uh hit me up on instagram uh tall tales custom tackles you know pretty much all of the same um anyway thank you i appreciate it and we will catch you next time uh hopefully the next video will be within a few days all right